So a quick little video. There's a little discussion on this EV blog forum right now about this particular board. This is the Siglent STB3 board, which is a demo board for doing testing of oscilloscopes and people. If you want to sort of train yourself on how to use an oscilloscope to do decoding and things like that, this board generates a whole bunch of different signals and then it means you can actually learn how to use a scope and that sort of thing. Right? It's more of a training tool, I think. You can hook up your scope and decode different formats like SPI, RCC, CAN, it's got parallel as well as serial communication so it's got waveform generators and triggers and quite a versatile little board these are available from Siglent there's a bit of discussion right now because someone's got one of these boards and they're trying to decode the I squared C output only they're not getting the full response they're only getting about half of the response which is weird now I think there's probably a reason for this I can see a commonality between a couple of examples I've seen I'm going to show you the scope up there in a second which shows what this board is currently doing which is actually fine in this case. This ball is working correctly and it's outputting as you would expect. So I'm going to show you on screen on the scope and I'll come back and explain why I think there's a difference. So here's my SDS 2104X Plus, sort of, and here is the decoding working. And as you can see, in the actual decoding values, it is saying Siglent, which is what it's supposed to be outputting. So it says Siglent has got some characters after that just to fill it in. In my case, I had no trouble getting this working, it just worked. So I'm going to show you the setup first, and then I'll go back and explain why I think there's a difference between this board I'm getting here and the results that someone else is seeing on the forum. So you've got decoding, which is turned on down here. There's the menu. On, on set up for bus one, I squared C. Bus display is obviously on, right, in ASCII mode, so I can decode it easily on screen. Bus signals, 1.68, 1.67. It doesn't actually matter. Anything within that range of the actual waveform should actually work, really. I could be down like 3 volts or, or 1 volt, it wouldn't actually matter. I did try sweeping up and down the voltages, it made no difference. That didn't matter at all. Protocol config, I've got the rewrite bit turned off currently, I mean I could turn it on, but... It doesn't really matter. In this case, it doesn't have an effect. Now what I also did, once I had that set up, is I went to protocol copy, over there, and then copy to trigger, like that. So that copies that setup over to the trigger setup so then you're actually doing serial triggering so we've got to set up on trigger we'll see on serial type i squared c signals we'll see they're exactly the same as i set on the other menu because it's copied them over and trigger settings it's on start condition could do it on, on end or whatever if you want to do but i've got it on start and obviously zone triggering is not being used right now because i'm using the actual serial trigger so i mean obviously it's there but I'm not using it, okay? There's no delays or anything added like that or anything like that going on. It's purely serial start condition and it's decoding it just fine. Now, I was going to actually do this across multiple oscilloscopes and just prove this board works across different scopes and things like that. In case there's some kind of weird timing problem or something odd with it, which may be affecting a particular scope, but I actually think it's not a timing problem. I think it's something else completely. This, I believe, is fine. So this is my board, and this is marked as 120-something GC STB3. Serial numbers that starts with MK, MK1608, starts with. It's an SDY8.007.126B, and STB3 underscore 160100, just here. And this part seems the same across the boards, but the serial numbers I've seen are different. And this badge, its definitions are a bit different. I think maybe it depends on where they're made, I'm not quite sure. I've tried changing all these switches. It's just in case these have some kind of effect on the data, they don't. If I do a reset, I'll see it starts again. You've got the shield protocol button here, which switches between the protocols, and that's definitely set to uh, I squared C, as you saw on the scope. I was saying before about there being a difference that I could identify between what I have here and what I've observed on the forum. So there's two examples on the forum with people with these boards where it doesn't show the S I G L E, S I G L E, five characters gone. It only shows the NT. So instead of showing Siglent, it shows NT. The first five characters are gone, which is interesting. But there's two examples of this. So I've got one on the actual member of the forum who's got an issue with his ball, which is who was querying this. And there's also an example video which has been put up in that thread, which shows somebody else doing testing with one of these. And if you look at the decoded values from their testing, because they're giving like a serial demonstration, it actually has exactly the same problem. And those two boards are exactly the same version. My board is slightly different. And the difference is actually quite subtle. Well, ish. Uh, it stood out to me. I noticed it straight away when I first saw it. 
If you look at these connections here, these are all loops, right? These are all loop connections for hooking on. On the two versions on the EV blog forum, they both have pin headers, two pin headers, right? So double pin, 0.1 inch headers on each position instead. So they're not loops, they've got pins. What are the differences between the two? I'm not exactly sure, but that's a common entity I saw, right? This is working, and other people which have got these boards of working have got the loops. The ones which aren't working correctly on I squared C have got the pin headers. So I'm guessing the pin header version is an early version, a very early version, and, and they didn't quite have their protocols set up right on the actual board, and they've done a later revision, fixed that problem, and they've got these loops as well, and upgraded to loops instead of the pin headers. So I think that's what the difference is. So I think if you've got a pin header version, the data you're getting out isn't going to be the full signalant. It's going to be NT. It's going to be missing the first five. Think about this, five characters. So in the manual it states there's a 7 and 10 bit addressing mode and it outputs 12 bytes of data. So I'm actually wondering if these very early boards have a mistake where the data coming out is not 12 bytes but 7 bytes. Because the difference between 7 and 12 is 5 and we're seeing a deduction of 5 bytes. So it's like the first 5 bytes have been dumped and ignored and not actually being output. The early boards seem to do that. This board seems to be 12 bytes not 7. And obviously, the ones I've seen are only outputting 7 bytes, which is weird. When you actually look at the examples on the forum of where they're getting this weird data coming out, it is showing the full packet, but it's not actually what well, a full packet they've got isn't 12 bytes long, it's 7. So, if you found the information useful, click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Other videos down below. Just go over there if you're not already subscribed. Catch you later.